This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is free. Assange has been freed from prison in the U.K. after accepting a plea deal with U.S. prosecutors. He's now flying to the Pacific island of Saipan in the northern Mariana Islands, where he'll appear before a U.S. federal judge Wednesday morning. As part of the plea deal, Assange will plead guilty to a single felony count of illegally obtaining and disclosing national security material. He's expected to be sentenced to time served. <clears throat> Julian Assange will then be allowed to fly home to Australia. The shocking developments cap a more than decade-long legal ordeal for Julian Assange after he published classified documents detailing U.S. war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan, including a video that showed a U.S. military Apache helicopter in Baghdad killing 12 civilians, including two Reuters journalists. WikiLeaks titled the video Collateral Murder. Press freedom groups have denounced successive U.S. administrations for targeting Assange, who'd been facing 175 years in U.S. prison if he'd been extradited and convicted. Twelve years ago this month, Julian Assange entered the Ecuadorian embassy, where he was given political asylum. He spent seven years there. He has spent the last five years locked up in the harsh Belmarsh prison in London. His wife, Stella Assange, said earlier today, Julian will now seek a pardon after the plea deal. Of course. I mean, I think that the, the correct uh course of action from the U.S. government should have been to drop the case entirely. Um, we will be seeking a pardon, obviously. Uh, but uh, the fact that there is a guilty plea under the Espionage Act in relation to um, obtaining and disclosing national defense information is obviously uh, a very uh, serious um, concern from, for journalists and national security journalists in general. Earlier today, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said he wanted Julian Assange brought back home to Australia as soon as possible. I've been very clear, as both the Labor leader uh, in opposition, but also as Prime Minister, uh, that uh, regardless of the views that people have, about Mr Assange's activities, the case has dragged on for too long. Yeah. There is nothing to be gained by his continued incarceration and we want him brought home to Australia. Yeah. And we have engaged and advocated Australia's interests using all appropriate channels <coughs> to support a positive outcome, and I've done that uh, since very early on in my prime ministership. I will have more to say when these legal proceedings have concluded. Uh, which I hope will be very soon, and I will uh, report uh, as appropriate uh, at that time. I am Amy Goodman in New York, joined by Democracy Now! co-host Juan Gonzalez in Chicago. Hi, Juan. Uh, hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Well, these are certainly stunning developments, and we're joined right now by three guests. In Washington, D.C., Trevor Tim is with us, executive director of the Freedom of the Press Foundation, a group that's long advocated for Assange's release. In Sydney, Australia, Anthony Lowenstein is with us, independent journalist, longtime supporter of WikiLeaks and author of the best-selling book, The Palestine Laboratory, How Israel Exports the Technology of Occupation Around the World. And we're joined by Julian Assange's half-brother, the filmmaker Gabriel Shipton, joining us from La Rochelle, France. Uh, Gabriel, uh, can you talk about this, these latest developments that have shocked many around the world? As we speak, uh, Julian Assange has already landed in Bangkok, has left the maximum security prison, Belmarsh, headed to Saipan, where he'll enter a U.S. district court and then freed to go home to Australia. How did this all take place? Well, this has been years, many, many years of advocacy uh, at many, many levels across uh, government, uh, in Congress, uh, through the media, through uh, 
non-government organizations, advocacy organizations like uh, Trevor Timms, Freedom of the Press Foundation. Uh, this has been a huge campaign uh, that has been a global campaign, uh, a grassroots campaign, uh, and this is the culmination of that campaign. Uh, the Australian government has, uh, as you heard from the Prime Minister now, the Australian government uh, has been really at the edge, uh, the coalface now at the last moments, making sure that Julian can get home. They're the only government that can represent him uh, diplomatically, but it's the real pressure from the Australian people uh, that, that led them uh, to be able to advocate so strongly uh, for Julian Assange. So uh, I've been speaking to Julian over the past week. Uh, he's been getting ready uh, to get on this um, get on this flight. It all seems very surreal and overwhelming. I mean, we're overjoyed uh, as Julian's family. He still has a couple of hurdles to get through, uh, as you described, uh, before he is completely safe and sound on Australian uh, soil. Uh, but Stella and my dad are looking forward to meeting him on the tarmac once he arrives in Australia. And this is just such a happy moment for us all, Amy and Juan, and thank you as well to your uh, reporting on this case. Uh, without uh, media organisations like yours, uh, people wouldn't know what's going on. And many of your viewers out there who I know have advocated for Julian, I want to thank them as well from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, an amazing moment. And, and Gabriel, there has there have been now for several weeks uh, some reports that there was an impending uh, potential uh, plea deal that would that would gain uh, Julian's release. Uh, uh, but could you talk about in your discussions with your brother what finally put uh, put it over, and also why he he is flying uh, to the northern Mariana Islands to appear in a federal court there? What's your understanding of that? Well, the, there is a high court. There was a high court appeal hearing coming up on the 9th and 10th of July uh, in the United Kingdom, and that that appeal hearing was uh, Julian's appeal was approved, and it was expressly on uh, the freedom of expression uh, parts of this case that Julian would not enjoy freedom of expression rights if he was uh, extradited uh, to the United States. So. There, there was a bit of a ticking clock uh, for the DOJ to push this through. I doubt they would have wanted to have a very high profile freedom of expression uh, case in the UK courts running um, in, in running up to this election season. So I think there was a bit of uh, a bit of pressure to get this resolved. Um, the UK election is also coming up, but uh, I have to give credit to everybody out there who's been advocating for this for so long because this wouldn't have been possible uh, without them. Uh, the stopover in the islands, that is the closest US jurisdiction to Australia. So uh, Julian can stop off there on the way back to Australia and uh, the judge can uh, hopefully accept, uh, accept the plea deal. So that's the idea and thinking uh, around stopping there. Uh, it's only six hours away from Australia and is, is on the way back from uh, the United Kingdom. And in your conversations with Julian uh, in recent weeks, uh, what's your sense of his health? Because there have been many concerns over the years uh, of his uh, of his imprisonment and restrictions in terms of uh, his health. Yeah, well, his physical health, uh, his mental well-being has been worn down uh, through his time in prison. Uh, so now he has, uh, well, not quite yet, but. Uh, hopefully, in 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 the next day or so, he'll be able to uh, get some serious rest and and recuperation. Spend time with his two small children and his wife Stella. Uh, yeah, it's just a a very happy happy moment for us. The doctors I've spoken to have seen Julian said he can uh, he can recover. Uh, so uh, we're hoping that he gets some time now to um, do that, where uh, just some quiet time, you know, to listen to the birds sing and. Uh, maybe take a swim in the ocean. Uh, I spoke to Julian and he said that uh, he was looking forward to maybe uh, going to some of the places or seeing some of the places that he used to uh, roam around in Melbourne. But I think life's going to be a bit different for Julian now. Uh, the last time he was in, 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 in Melbourne or in Australia uh, was many, many years ago before he had such fame or notoriety. So 
uh, it's going to be a different life for him, but uh, a free life, which uh, we're all, yeah, very pumped about. Well, Gabriel Shifton, congratulations. Assange's brother speaking to us from La Rochelle, France, where he's at a film festival. He's also the producer of a film about Julian Assange and his father called Ithaca.